Mr. King, that I'm going to discuss with you regarding management of the intraventricular space. So I'm going to discuss this device, Eurofloor, which is the active CSF exchange. You actively exchange the CSF with the ICP measurement. I come from Finland, Helsinki. We are a small country, but we have a very large hospital. So we treat many kinds of diseases all the time, and uh, we have a lot of patients. Uh, we are a highly visited center, and our vascular group is known for its business. Uh, so the device itself, it's called Aeroflow. Uh, it has, I think, three phases. One is the complication avoidance, secondary injury reduction, and therapeutic approaches. Uh, when you exchange the CSF, it's a digital pump, basically, which measures the ICP, it irrigates, and then it passively drains. You can exchange the CSF with a high volume, give medication, change pH when needed, and then have an impact on the patients. If you go to the historical history and then see that the how it is were it's a very, very old method to relieve the pressure and not the source. So comparing to the aeroflow, the activity you actually relieve the source of the pressure. Infection rate is lower because there is no irrigation, there is no coagulation on the tip, there is no need to exchange the EVD, and it's active. Neurosurgery is a highly secondary injury reduction field, so we try to reduce the secondary injury. And uh, for that reason, uh, the best way is to remove the blood as quickly as possible from the subarachnoidal space and ventricles. And uh, this is how we are able to reduce the secondary injury. These are the cases, for example, this one, the ICH burst and giant drainage. So for the Euroflow, uh, after three days, you are able to remove the ICH part, but also the IBH part. It's a remarkable way to remove this deep ICH bleeding. Another very well described case is this Moya Moya case. Ventricles casted with the blood. There's a lot of blood, there is a blockage in the fourth ventricle. Uh, usually this it lasts for a week or two to remove the blood and take the EVD out. With the aeroflow, you can see the Moya Moya, which was the recent cause of the bleeding. With the Moya Moya, we were able to remove the IVH in 47 hours. So comparing that you remove it normally in a week or even two, in less than two days, with the very small amount of TPA, you are able to remove the majority of it. So you are reducing the secondary injury related to the bleeding itself. We are running now the RCT, the active removal of the cerebral hemorrhage. The idea is to see that by uh, removing actively the IVH, it can be having an impact on neurological status, muscle spasms, shock dependency, and overall secondary damage control. By exchanging the CSF for the bodies and removing the blood, we, the hypothesis that are we able to achieve reduction of secondary injury. And this is the the end point of the study is reduction of IVH by 75% and there are famous centers involved in our study. Uh, so, there is other bleedings than spontaneous ICH IVH. This is an example of the aneurysm, VCOM aneurysm. Uh, very uh, heavy bleeding uh, to the interventricular space and also the ICH. It was a paper mechanism that was coined. The aneurysm is over there. The point the aneurysm and the airflow start to function. In 36 hours, we were able to remove significant amount of the blood from the cortical area to remove also ICH and IVH part with a very small amount of TPA. So, in this way, we were able uh, to treat this patient by removing also the subarachnoidal blood from the aneurysm. Later. For that reason, 
we thought that if you are able to remove the blood from the subarachnoidal space, you are able to maybe reduce the shunt dependency and the vasospasm. Because the bleeding itself makes a disruption of CSF circulation and there is a fibrosis formation. So we are running now a study for uh, shunt dependency and vasospasm, where we see that if we treat say, the patients with the active uh, fluid exchange and remove the blood quickly as possible, reduce the secondary injury, and give the possibility to uh, reduce also shunt dependency and vasospasm. So these are the RCTs and the whole concept is based on removing the toxic blood as quickly as possible. And of course we have also the therapeutic approach. So it's not only by removing the blood, but you're also able to give, uh, for example, antibiotics. Uh, very high mortality cases are the ventriculitis cases. These are the published cases. Uh, patient with the shunt dependency in the image A got the shunt infection, high bacterial mass in the ventricle, so heavy ventriculitis, and into the aeroflow, we start to exchange the CSF, remove the bacterial mass, and finally in 10 days we exchange with 11 liters of CSF. And the patient is alive with the same modified ranking scale condition as was previously to the ventriculitis. The second case uh, is uh, similar to the first one. In 14 days, with abscess and ventriculitis, we were able to exchange 40 liters of CSF. The patient got to live in a dependent life after that, with a very high mortality. These cases are published, and protocol how we manage these cases are available for free in the research field.